I've been in crypto for um, over four years now. Mm -hmm. So I've always been on the DeFi side or on the infrastructure side, and I've always been involved in marketing. So work, mm -hmm. working either as a CMO or uh, an advisor, strategy consultant to different protocols in the space. Uh, whenever I get asked about the differences between Web2 and Web3 marketing, I think my most common answer is like yes and no mm -hmm. at the same time because it's still marketing, right? It's yeah. still the same fundamentals. You still have to um, have some kind of a mission. You have to wrap it into storytelling. Yeah. You have to find distribution channels. My view on crypto is that it's getting more and more integrated into like traditional web to tech mm -hmm. and it's having more and more utility. Yeah. So instead of like, let's say having NFTs or something that was just for fun, we're actually having Using the tech. products. Yeah. Yeah. If you have the chance to talk with Satoshi Nakamoto mm -hmm. and ask him anything, what would you ask him? Oh, it's a spicy or, one. Or say everything. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a spicy one. Qué habido gente de Espacio Cripto, el día de hoy me encuentro con Senia, eh, CMO de Orca, un DEX muy grande dentro de Solana y pues vamos a tener una conversación muy interesante en inglés, le vamos a poner aquí subtítulos, pero pues la presentación en español porque pues este podcast es en español. Eh, how, how are you doing Senia today? Good, thank you, thank you for inviting. No, no problem, I'm really excited to, with this conversation. Uh, we talk a little bit that you are not also just on marketing side, but you like to to somehow be a DJ, like make yeah. transactions, <laughs> do some, doing some swaps. Uh, t tell us a little bit, a little bit uh, about yourself. What you do in Orca, mm -hmm. what you do in crypto? Sure, so I've been in crypto for um, over four years now. Mm -hmm. So I've always been on the DeFi side or on the infrastructure side, and I've always been involved in marketing. So work mm. to, working either as a CMO, or uh, an advisor, strategy consultant to different protocols in the space. Mm. So prior to joining Orca, I've been at protocols uh, named Polkadex, Premia, and Anchor, leading Premier marketing studio. for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, they were, somehow my experience was um, inside DeFi, but with completely different protocols. So I think uh, this was very interesting, first of all, and, and there were different challenges in each of them. But at the same time, it uh, gave me an opportunity to form like a really good overview of the market mm. and a really good overview of different ecosystems, how communities respond, and uh, what is basically interesting and how you can form marketing better in the way that it benefits mm -hmm. users as well. So uh, since June, I've joined Orca and uh, so. I'm leading marketing for Orca. And uh, we're gearing up to a lot of exciting things, both mm. on the marketing front and on the wider company front. Yeah, because marketing is also uh, not just about the strategies, but like the, the vision, like what, what's yeah. the target user? Uh, because the strategy is, is looking for the, for the retail user or mm -hmm. more like uh, LPs or institutions. Mm -hmm. how, how you manage like to make that balance between mm -hmm. like normies and people that have probably more volume than... Yeah, that's a great question because for Orca, we have two sides of the product. So uh, we have the trading side, which is for mm -hmm. traders, it's like a classical deck side. And then we have the liquidity side, which uh, offers pools to liquidity providers. Mm -hmm. So for us, like after a lot of internal conversations, we decided to uh, make a higher stake, but a higher stake on uh, the liquidity provisioning side. Because okay. I think it's also, there are so many DEXs now, and yeah. virtually everyone is offering more or less the same product. So it's quite difficult to differentiate among other DEXs. And uh, we really wanted to bring value to Solana ecosystem and to our community as well. That is why uh, we're focusing more on the LP side and uh, offering really interesting things for our LPs of different levels. So as Orca has been on the market for four years now, yeah. uh, the protocol transitioned a lot like throughout different product uh, iterations. and. Um, most recently, we started offering uh, concentrated liquidity on our pools, uh, which is super interesting offering for sophisticated LPs because they know how to set the parameters so that it's more like beneficial and more lucrative potentially for them. Mm. Um, but now what we're doing is like focusing more on the retail users and focusing okay. more on users of varying levels of uh, integration and like knowledge of crypto. So we're trying to do concentrated liquidity in a way that like users 
even with the minimal knowledge of what is actually concentrated liquidity can use it because it's going to be super easy on the UX. It's yeah. simply going to be like clicking a couple of buttons mm -hmm. and you can uh, set up the new pools, you can provide liquidity to existing pools. So this is where we're trying to really differentiate and like bring something good to the market. Concentrated, you mean like uh I read something about deep mm -hmm. liquidity to avoid that the user mm -hmm. have like big slippage and... Um, oh. By concentrated, I mean that, uh, so when you're usually setting the pool, you don't set any parameters, you are just like providing liquidity to the full range. Okay. Uh, which like potentially is uh, not interesting for a lot of investors because they're kind of spreading their money thin and their mm. assets. So with concentrated liquidity, you can provide liquidity for a very narrow range. Let's say like you're interested in particular price ranges. Mm -hmm. So this is where you can provide your liquidity. And if you know how it works, you can make your assets work harder mm -hmm. while you still have the same amount of capital deployed. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. Uh, also, I ha I'm really curious on, in, in the marketing stage on Wednesday, Uh, mm -hmm. They say something really interesting that I see a lot in crypto Twitter that <laughs> mm -hmm. that marketing in Web3 it's the, it's different and I I, I I think it's not like there's like mm -hmm. a very pool of people and you you need to uh, keep like implementing the the strategies that have yeah. always worked. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit uh, yeah. about that? Like, I think it's one of the most challenging questions and to be honest, like. Uh, whenever I get asked about the differences between Web2 and Web3 marketing, I think my most common answer is like yes and no mm -hmm. at the same time because it's still marketing, right? It's yeah. still the same fundamentals. You still have to um, have some kind of a mission. You have to wrap it into storytelling. Yeah. You have to find distribution channels, which works in any sort of product or any industry. Yeah. And I think also Web3 marketing has really evolved a lot for the past four years because initially when I was just starting, it was a completely different scene to traditional Web2 marketing because mm -hmm. I came from tech background. And to be honest, like some things that were happening in Web3 marketing, I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Um, Like we, engagement with the community or? Um, no, I think engagement with community is an interesting thing because mm. it's kind of like you have a feedback instantly to whatever yeah. you do. So this is like the best way to test things because I came from a growth marketing perspective and mm. uh, I was working with a lot of like testing platforms where you don't necessarily go directly to your audience to ask like whether they liked your campaign mm. or not but you are trying to kind of decipher this through different platforms. Mm. I feel like in crypto marketing, um, there is no barrier, right? Like you, you do some kind of a campaign and then community tells you straight away. Yeah. And you know whether you know they, instantly. Yeah. yeah. And they're usually like very passionate about that. <laughs> so you know whether they loved it or they mm. hated it. <laughs> there is no in yeah. between. So I think that's the nice part. But in terms of the difference with Web2, at least the way I see it, I think we have more channels simply because we have more audiences to talk to. Yeah. So in traditional marketing, you talk to the end user, right? And this is your audience and you kind of talk to them from top to down, mm -hmm. uh, from the brand to the end consumer. In crypto marketing, first of all, you kind of talk to everyone. So you talk to your uh, community members, you talk to your potential product users, to your existing product users, to your investors and VCs in most cases. Uh, you talk to like other projects if you are doing B2B on mm -hmm. or any kind of co-marketing. So it's uh, way more difficult to figure out what's your narrative and like what's your language. Yeah. How do you actually talk to your audience? Because you have like five of them and you have to figure yeah. out some kind of a standardized way that at the same time like speaks to all of them. I, I think like you, you, you get like a lot of options and probably yeah. the, the, the end consumer is going to give you a lot of good mm -hmm. insights even for the, let's say for the LPs. Yeah. And you true. make a lot of connections, but mm -hmm. there are so many variables that you can be like scared, yeah. you know, like uh, yeah. uh, to condense all that. I, I, I think that's the challenge. And also the challenge is, mm -hmm. is that as, as Orca has like this instant feedback from the community, mm -hmm. Every other protocol has that. 
and every yeah. other protocol has their community. Yeah. So how do you compete? How do, how do you stay relevant? <laughs> That's a really good question. And mm -hmm. I think it's, um, this question is becoming like more and more pronounced mm -hmm. while the industry is evolving. Because now uh, somebody mentioned that there are more L2s than there are countries. And uh, <laughs> I think with DEXs, <laughs> it's even the worst <laughs> yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because literally, like anyone entering crypto as a builder wants to build a DAX, <laughs> and uh, it's virtually offering exactly the same product, yeah. even in different ecosystems. There's so, even chains that focus just on like uh, DAX, like uh, or exactly. say or this one hyper liquid. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And there are also like multiple chains that focus yeah. just on <laughs> <Yeah>. DEXs. <laughs> so kind of like the problem spirals. I think with Orca, what's very interesting is that it's one of the first protocols on Solana and mm -hmm. uh, it's the first DAX on Solana. So we kind of coined this OG name for us. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that the protocol was never hacked mm -hmm. adds a lot of security element to that. So uh, basically our main differentiation is the OG factor and mm -hmm. the trust factor. Because we try to um, look at the long-term vision and um, we're trying to mention this all the time for our communities so, so that we're not interested in any like short-term short marketing stunts or like any activities where mm. we just basically sprinkle a bunch of money on top of it and we attract low-quality users. So whatever we do, we're really uh, keeping at the back of our mind that we are entrusted with users' money eventually. Mm. So we have to make sure that our users' funds are safe and that our users are having the best experience in terms of um, interaction with our UX, in terms of like any customer support, any issues they might encounter, mm. or even like the fact that we take feedback very um, attentively. We even have like an internal Slack channel that aggregates all the feedback mm, across different okay. platforms. So the whole team knows like what's, what's happening. happening. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's a good one because uh, I think some some projects mm -hmm. like focus more like on catching the narrative and be aggressive, but yeah. uh, it, it, it can work. But, but yeah. you have a <laughs> lot of risk like to don't yeah. catch it or make a mistake or get it, get hacked mm -hmm. or some user getting wrecked. I don't know. Yeah. And there there is where you lost the trust, and I think like your storytelling was like we are the. Mm -hmm. You can trust. You can trust us. So, where, yeah. what's the story of Orca? That or? Uh, yeah, I think this is the core story of Orca. But then, um, what do you want to like? I mean, the story you tell every day, like mm -hmm. to, to the to the users. Yeah, I think what's also interesting about Orca, it's uh, one of the best teams I worked with, to be mm -hmm. honest. Okay. Because there are two co-founders who are super passionate about what they're doing. And I think it's a perfect mix of mm -hmm. like skill sets because we have Yutaro who is taking care of all the developer part and uh, he moved to become the CTO of Orca. And then we have Ori who was always like more on the business front. She has the design background. So everything, mm -hmm. all the visual elements that you see were created by her. Mm -hmm. And as you can imagine, when you have two founders who are like super passionate about what mm -hmm. they do, this is kind of like a love child, <laughs> right? <laughs> so everyone in the team has the same notion that this is not just something that we do, it's not just work. We're actually like very much invested into mm. what we're doing and our respective domains. Yeah, and that, that, that's really uh, attractive to users, like to, to mm -hmm. a story that it, it doesn't matter like if it's the greatest technology or the greatest, yeah. you name it, but w when a founder is so passionate about his mission, mm -hmm. like you want to be part of that. Exactly, mm -hmm. I think it's for everyone, not just for founders. It's like, I think for founders, they need to have this special skill if they want to be successful, that they they need to like really burn with what they're doing mm. and they need to know how to ignite the spark in other people. Because mm. even when you go to conferences, you can spot like who, people yeah. who are doing just BD for the sake of BD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're trying to sell something to you, but mm. you know that they're, you know, like, they <laughs> yeah. don't buy it themselves, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know it, you've seen it. Yeah. And then you see people who are actually thinking that their product is, like, great, and you actually want to try it, mm -hmm. because they're so, like, sparkling with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the BD stuff, it's kind of interesting because mm -hmm. sometimes uh, people like you, you, I don't know if you use mm -hmm. the, the app of permissionless like to m get the matches and to network 
to be honest. No, okay. I didn't have time. I I I, I try try it out, and mm -hmm. a lot of people like approach me like mm -hmm. I, I need to schedule a podcast. Like I, I yeah. yeah, schedule a podcast. Like yeah, talk about my product, and I'm like mm. yeah. Now I don't want to do it. Like it's 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 real. Like uh, yeah, just for the sake like oh you you're a content creator. Okay, record me and publish it to the world. Like, yeah, it's very much like play to play approach, which I think it used to work. But at least like what I'm seeing the industry evolving to, uh, people are forming connections, and this this is what we discussed with you briefly like before starting yeah. to record that. That like even with the events, you can see the difference when the event is more like kind of intimate and on a smaller side, you can form connections mm -hmm. with people better. And then when you see them next time or when you need something from them, you are not like going to them to extract some value yeah. from them. You are actually like, oh, I have a friend with whom we can like, we can make business. Mm -hmm. So I think this is like, this is what's incredible for me, for mm -hmm. the crypto industry. It doesn't feel like it's hard work, mm -hmm. though all of us have like, flown here and it's like long flight you know it's like long hours that we do we do a lot of work we wear multiple hats but at the same time it's, it's fun yeah it's it fun. is fun because mm -hmm. we're all enjoying mm -hmm. and, and you can see that right yeah yeah it's 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 like a for me it's a blessing like to, to mm -hmm. be working in crypto because yeah. uh, sometimes in, we uh, scheduling the podcast uh, researching the the guest mm -hmm. like I, I need to ask the questions that the guest wants to answer like mm -hmm. then the whole day passes and all I did was work but it didn't felt like work and I, I yeah. think that's a blessing I, I guess yeah. um, let's let's finish this up like I, I want mm -hmm. you to give me I want to ask, ask you one two more questions mm -hmm. one is on your past on your four years of experience as marketing mm -hmm. in, in crypto where do you think like the alpha is going to go like alpha like as, as a marketer like how, yeah. how do you stay relevant you need to be on on crypto twitter you need to be engaged with the community yeah. you have to you need to have a longer uh, vision because sometimes it's mm -hmm. a lot of noise how, how how can you separate what's essential mm -hmm. versus noise that's a really good question mm -hmm. because i think in general in crypto this is the most difficult thing Right, because mm -hmm. we're all like overloaded by information, and like yeah. literally everyone I know at least once told me that like I look at my phone, it gives me anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Something is popping yeah. up all the time, right? Yeah. You know that. And sometimes, like when I'm tired, I'm just like I see a hundred messages. I'm like I don't want to respond. Yeah. I'm scared. <laughs> I'll, yeah. do I'll do it tomorrow. Or you, or you open the 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 Slack or Twitter, and I was like I. I didn't need to see that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you can't unsee it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think in terms of marketing alpha, I would think um, like it's quite tricky for marketers because um, I think to be good in the crypto space, and this is also the differentiator between like Web 2 and Web 3, mm -hmm. you actually need to be in the know in the industry and you have to uh, like keep your hand on the pulse in terms of like news that are coming out, yeah. you need to understand the new narratives, the slang, memes and all of that. So this, I think the easiest way to do it is just like follow protocols that you like and especially mm -hmm. whose marketing you like and also follow founders of the protocols mm. because I think thought leadership has been like the cornerstone of crypto all the time but especially now because there are really a lot of very bright founders who have like incredible perspective not just on crypto but in general the founder the, is like the best marketer of the exactly product. yeah I think especially in some ecosystems like especially in Solana for some reason mm -hmm. Founders are the KOLs and the influencers. Like they have to. Yeah. They have to. Yeah. Like, I, I there's a really good uh, article that is called "Doing Things That Don't Scale," mm -hmm. and it says that founders should focus like 80% of their time uh, interacting with users and yeah. asking them what they like and see if, and do experiments, mm -hmm. talk with them, talking with them. Mm -hmm. And some founders just want to like stay home and write code. And yeah. I mean, if you're a founder, you, you have to be present. Yeah, I think so, because in crypto, it's like everyone is kind of bidding in their own way, right? Yeah. Like everyone is doing business and attracting business to the company. 
and especially when you're a founder, people want to trust you and they want to see the face behind the code. Of course. So I think it's very important. But I would add to, uh, so like to stay on top of things, I think crypto Twitter is still the cornerstone. Mm. But also um, what helps me a lot to form perspective is simply talking to other marketers or like reading oh, okay. content from them or just like asking them direct questions. Because mm. I think we're all in the same boat. We all encounter the same difficulties. We all have like the same hurdles to overcome. Um, so sometimes, like even yesterday, I had a couple of conversations with like fellow marketing leaders mm. and I was like okay I'm changing my strategy like, <laughs> not completely but I'm like I'm tweaking a lot of yeah things. of course mm -hmm. I, I like that and that's the alpha and then mm -hmm. I have a, a last question but just real quick yeah. are you bullish on anything right now like, <laughs> besides Solana Orca, um, or like uh, maybe a narrative I think for now I'm being a bit like on the sidelines personally so okay. I'm not like heavily investing at the moment because I'm trying to see where the market is going. Oh, okay. So I think we had a couple of like major bumps for some narratives like meme coins, for example. Mm -hmm. I still think we will see more up, uptime happening there. Everyone was betting on October, but October didn't <laughs> happen yet. So maybe like up November or <laughs> however it works. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, but there are a couple of narratives that I think like AI that deep might in, yeah. dip in, that might come back, because my view on crypto is that it's getting more and more integrated into like traditional Web2 tech, mm -hmm. and it's having more and more utility. Yeah. So instead of like, let's say having NFTs or something that was just for fun, we're actually having Using the tech. products. Yeah. 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 yeah, people are still talking for, uh, that, oh yeah, when mass adoption uh, mm -hmm. is gonna come, like. It's now happening. Like mm -hmm. in Latin America, everyone uses stable coins. Like I yeah. have a uh, everyone in Spacio Crypto like, like mm -hmm. gets paid in stable coins, and yeah. we're fine with that. Uh, that's cool. Uh, last question: mm -hmm. If you have the chance to talk with Satoshi mm -hmm. Nakamoto mm -hmm. and ask him anything, what would you ask him? Oh, it's a spicy or, one. Or <laughs> say everything. Yes. It's a spicy one. First of all, I think like me, the same as everyone in the industry, are dying to figure out who's that. <laughs> like, yeah. Whether we will ever know this or not. But I think the question that I would ask, like whether they are happy with um, what is happening in the industry now. Because when I was starting, um, and like mind that it was just four years ago, so it's not like decades ago, but the mindset of crypto people was completely different. It was yeah. very much like against the government for financial freedom, just like kind of, we can't say these words in a podcast, but you know what to do with the government. <laughs> <laughs> so now I think it's moving towards uh, like peaceful co-living and like collaborating mm. with uh, traditional systems. Mm -hmm. So I think I would ask like whether he's happy with, with the that. result okay. yeah, or whether it was intended for something else. Mm. Yeah, because with this meme coin craze, AI nerd themes, yeah. who knows what he's like. I, I just want to like to improve payments, who knows like. Yeah, <laughs> because like, you know, it feels like there's so many different mm -hmm. alleyways of crypto that it's like there are people building core stuff, but there are also people just like having fun. And there is also like a bunch of bad actors in the market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. Well, I like the answer and I like the conversation. It was really great. Likewise. Like, um, Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully we can do it another time, probably next permissionless or next event. And yeah. thanks a lot and go follow Senia on their socials are in the links below. See you guys. Thank you guys. Adios.